Welcome, my lovies. So, this is the discussion that I had with Favor in 2021, I think, and we were talking about body shaming, and I thought I should bring it to your attention. What we spoke about, and maybe you can learn one or two things to empower, love, and look after yourself. Enjoy the watch, and I love you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Good evening to everyone watching us online. Thank you for joining this power conference and we hope that you've been blessed so far. My name is Favor Adejimi and I'm here with Lebo Cody. And today we will be discussing a very prominent issue in our society. And that topic is that of social media and how it affects your self-esteem, particularly in terms of body shaming. Now, as the Church of Christ, it, um, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. And we all have different social media accounts. And whether we like it or not, at times it can get personal and we see things that we wish we could be or could have. So we're going to be discussing that. So please stay tuned and enjoy. So, Miss Cody Unjani. Happy lessons, Wena. Ah, gerites, gerites. So, <laughs> can you just um, share uh, briefly with the congregation online how social media has affected you, particularly? Um, just a bit of your testimony for us. Thank you. Dumela. Um, social media on my side has affected me in terms of I've, I've always been a chubby child. So, social body shaming comes in all different forms skin color, your body weight, how you look, your body shape. It comes in all of that. And I've been the chubby, dark child growing up. And people will make fun of me. People will call me names because I didn't fit in. You will look at people in social media and you will think, am I too light enough to be accepted? Um, people accept people that are a bit yellow than, you, than, than I am. People I accept that. people that are a bit skinnier than I am. People accept people with big buttocks or big um, Endowed in the front. <laughs> Endowed in the front. That's what you're looking I for. Am. So as a child, growing up in an environment where everybody thinks you are not enough, growing up in an environment where everybody thinks you are not acceptable, the world doesn't love you. We live in the world of acceptance. And if no one accepts you, you will feel like you are nothing. Hence, we have so much high rate of suicidal. Kids make fun of other kids because they are dark. Adults make fun of other adults because they are dark. Men choose lighter people's skin to marry because they're dark. No offense to my dark sisters like I, but men always, like every form of depression comes in, in all different stages where you would find out that I'm a girl, I'm, I'm in the ages of getting married, all my yellow bone sisters are getting married and I'm left behind. If a guy walks up to us and there's a yellow one and a darker one, they're going to first approach the yellow one and I'll come second. 90% of the time, you come last. Whether it's skin, whether it's body, whether it's whatever, it affects your self-esteem, you end up going into depression, you end up going into, I'm not enough, I'm gonna kill myself, I'm not enough, I'm gonna go bleach my skin. The, uh, social media then says to you, hey, Lebo, you're not enough, here is a skin lightening product. Lebo, you're not enough, here is surgery to enlarge, enhance, or do whatever to your body. So you end up spending money that you first don't have, you end up trying to reach a life that you don't have. 99% of the time, those people have apps that had enhanced their body, that has glorified their body, and they are not what you think they are. So social media, it's a dangerous disease. It's another pandemic on its own. Mm -hmm. You can say um, that again. I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Now, I'll, I'll give myself for an example. Um, you know... I, I grew up as a foreigner in another land and I'm dark in complexion. So growing up, I always had comments like, oh, you know, people would call me Kiwi, the shoe polish. Um, people would say that- they I always get shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Names they come up with. No, yeah, like, like kids kids are very mean, you know. Um, I, I used to get called Kiwi. I used to be told that, ah, oh, they need to put baby powder on me so that they could see me at night. Oh like God. very, very th horrible things. Um, so, you know, you tend to grow up wanting to be something that God has not created you to be. And uh, so you, you, you explore different methods to try and fit this 
standard that you think is the norm. And But the irony is this. I once read a quote and it said, if you knew how often people thought about you, you actually wouldn't really care what people thought about you. Because people really don't think about you <laughs> as true. much as you think they think about you. you know, it's all in your head. <laughs> it's, it's all in your head. Like, you're like, oh, what will this person say? And this person, this person has their own problems that they're probably dealing with. Um, so... The thing is this, let me ask you this. Has someone ever come into your DM and be like, oh my goodness, and but maybe body shamed you or insulted you because of your complexion or because they felt like you don't fit whatever standard it is of beauty that they've created in their head? Not only in my DMs, even face to face. Really? Oh no, no, no. Oh, oh, no. I am from the west side of the kingdom. You you, you will not try that with me because one of us... People are day. bold. Yes, people have come up to me and told me that I'm too fat. Um, I'm one person that doesn't, maybe this is very wrong, but I'm one person that doesn't get bothered by how I look. If I know at this particular time in my life, my body is not a priority for me to get it into shape, I won't bother. Um, I section my problems. I'm that person that takes the problems at a time. Look, you know, I need to deal with this. And once I'm done, I'll go into that. I, I won't bombard myself. So, yes, people have come to me and said to me, um, you're too big. Or why don't you lose weight? Or um, I want to date you, but... I've never dated chubby girls, but I love your personality. Um, oh, oh, brother. Oh, <laughs> brother. If you come up to me and you say, well, one of us that day will land in pastor's office. That's all I'm saying. That's so all yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, people do come up to you. People do make fun of you. Sometimes it's a passing joke. Um, someone will say, um, oh, we came with friends and then we're going to go out, but I can't match the two of you because he's got his type of kind of girls and you not his it. Spec. He has, he has his, his spec. He has and you not it. So, yes, people are brave enough to come into your DMs to tell you things that they have no business in telling you and depressing you in your own comfort space. Wow. So so what? So my question to the to you is this: um, in terms of people who are watching, maybe young ladies, um, teenagers, I think one of the the stages that it's very difficult to, or you're trying to fit in the most, is in your teenage years, like when you're hitting your, well, grade six, grade seven, you know, to matric, and you know, everyone's doing this, everyone is this, and you're trying to fit in. And what if, what what do you say to the young ladies and gentlemen? Because it's not only for ladies; it happens to guys as well. So what do you say to the ladies and gentlemen that are watching us right now? Um, how do they handle this in a godly way? How do they reassert themselves of the fact that Christ is in me? The hope of glory is there. Everybody can preach. But if you're not willing to accept the preaching and understand the preaching, you're not going to go anywhere. First of all, you need to accept yourself. Accept who you are. Accept where you come from. Accept what God made you to be. You are gracefully created Amen. by the image of God. Hallelujah. You look like God. Oh, oh all right, all right, all so, right. <laughs> this is how, this how God be looking. I just want you all to know. I think we need to know where we need to get acceptance. And the only place we need to get acceptance is with God. Go back to basis. We all have our basis in life. Before I met you, I had a life. Before I met her, I had a mother. Um, and your, your mother, as a Christian, will tell you, you go back to church. Stop trying to fit in. You are the light of the world. Attach people from darkness to come to you. Let people fit in your surroundings. Don't want to leave your light and go fit in the darkness because you're going to get lost. Who sees what in the dark? Mm. No one. Mm. So mm. sit That's in your deep. corner. Pray to God to send you good friends. Trust me, someone is going to love you. Someone is going to worship you. Someone is going to respect you. Ask God to give you those people. Sometimes you don't even have to kneel down and cry out to God. Have a conversation with God. I write. Talk to Jesus. Elevation worship. Exactly. <laughs> I write. So when I have a, an idea or I have a something that bothers me and... I'm not in a good space to speak. I take my, I've got a diary, a prayer diary. I take my diary and I write this prayer down. The nice thing about giving things to God is you never have to think about them again. Oh yes. You never have to worry about them again. Hand them over to God and leave it at that. He will do the rest. So tell God, God, I am surrounded by a circle of friends that are making fun of me. I'm surrounded by friends that don't see me. Show your glory in me. You are meant 
to be different as a child of God. You, you are out. meant to stand out as a child of God. Why on earth would you accept less? Why want to fit in when you've been called to stand out? Thank you. It's, it's, you it's, are meant to attract. Stay in your corner. Ask God to send the relevant people to you. And he will do that. It's hard, I know. Hence, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying go, go fast for 40 days. Hence, I'm not saying attend Bible study for 236. But do I'm attend not saying, Bible study, though. <laughs> please Bible do. Is very important. I'm not saying that, but have conversation with God about your worries. There's a Sutu song that says, bring all to God with prayer. He already knows what you want. You just need to say it. So as a Christian child, go back to basis. Go back to God. Talk to God. Tell God what worries you. Trust me, you will see friends fall away. You will see comments fall away. Good people will surround you. And that, that thank you, Lebo, for those, those wonderful words. And that should be a lesson to us as well. Um, you might not be in the seat of being body shamed, but you might be the one body shaming others. Mm -hmm. Directly or indirectly. Repent. Repent, Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Um, but it's, it's actually very important to understand that, number one, as a Christian, first and foremost, your identity is in Christ Amen. Jesus. Every other identity that you surround yourself with will self-destruct. If you put your identity in things, those things can be stolen, those things can be burned. If you put your identity in people, people will, quote unquote, will fall your hand. They will not always be there. People will leave, leave you. People will forsake you. But when you put your identity in Christ Jesus, the song we normally sing in church says, on Christ the solid rock I stand. Amen. All other ground, money, status, power, people, every other ground is sinking sand. The one thing that is true in this life is Christ. Everything else comes and goes. So as Christians, we put our identity in Christ Jesus and it is important to know who God says you are. We sing that song, I know what God says I am, where he says I am, but do you really know? Do you actually know who God says you are? Do you know where God tells you to be? Do you know what God is saying you are? And how would you know that if you don't read your Bible? So it's important to, to know your identity in Christ Jesus. It's important to surround yourself with people who remind you of your identity in Christ Jesus when at times you feel like, you know, you're failing. We, we all have moments in our lives where we wish we could do better. We wish we were this person. We wish we had X. We wish we did Y. And life isn't like that. Life is not one plus one. But when you put your trust in Christ Jesus, when you lean, when you rest on his promises, everything else just will fall away, falls by the wayside. So it's important to be rooted in Christ. It's important to, to be in a place that you are encouraged to be yourself in Christ. You can't be, the Bible said, come let us make man in our image. God, God thought about you in eternity, in eternity, before your parents even thought of conceiving you, God planned you out. God was like, yeah, her hair is going to be like that. Her body is going to be like that. God already knew you. The Bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Do you know how that, how deep that is? It's like, very deep. It's extremely deep. It's like, I want to maybe create a car and... I know the way I want that car to be. I know how it needs to run. I there's know a planning in it. there's a plan and God planned you for I know the plans I have for you. Amen. So it's important that, you know, number one, if you're not born again, this is actually a call to, to repent. Leave that life of darkness. Leave the life that is, that is um, dominated by social media. I always say social media to me is cruise. We just, you know, we go there, we cruise, we log in, we log out, that's it. It's fun, it, it doesn't have to, it's, a, it's fun, it's another way to spread the gospel, it's another way to interact. But if it's going to take me away from my identity in Christ Jesus, then I don't want any of that. Amen. So, any final words? Here's another good tip. Clean your social media. Delete, block, <laughs> remove everybody that's giving you Remove I will, but what if it's my everything. family? What if it's my family? Remove. Oh, girl. <laughs> Remove. Like, trust me, I had to go through this in order to recognize myself. You need to remove anything that is toxic if it doesn't, as Pastor always says, if it doesn't give you peace, let it go. If it's not glorifying God, 
cut let it, it cut it cold <laughs> so remove everybody and try and invite good follow people that are good for your spirit follow people that are good in your space there is nothing good for me waking up and looking at my statuses in the morning and I'm seeing people posting about God and I, I read scripture after scripture after scripture of the people that I follow those are statuses follow what feeds your soul follow what gives you solid ground in God so you are what you see you are what you see so it's important to it's important to ensure that um, whoever it is or whatever it is you're following on social media is, is good for your soul you know um, the Bible says a, a merry heart does good like medicine Amen. so in other words if you are if you're constantly on social media and after you log out of Instagram you're like yo I feel terrible well Maybe you, you gotta you gotta reevaluate who exactly you're following mm -hmm. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I should be able to go on my social media. I should be encouraged. I should I should want to. It, I should it should not be a competition thing. You know it should be like oh okay wow I saw this okay my my life how do I get how do I do better to the glory of God anything that is not to the glory of God cut it cut it and what cut you see it. on social Scream. media doesn't necessarily have to give you doesn't necessarily have to uh, make you sad. It can literally want you to spend the money that you don't have. Because then you're not sad, but then you're seeing Lebo wearing this LV bag. But you and don't you're know like, it's I want it. <laughs> you don't have the money. Anything that's taking you out of your plans, because we all have budgets and we all have plans. Stick to your budget. Let it go. Mm, that's, that's another one. That's, a, that's, that's like a whole topic on its own. That's another topic on its own. That's another topic on its own. But the, I, the point of our message is this. Number one, your identity is in Christ. Amen. Nothing more, nothing less. Number two, if you haven't given your, your life to Christ yet, please, it is a call unto salvation. Please repent, surrender your life to Christ because he's the only one that can set you free and he's the only one that can get you through the things you, you're going through. Number three, social media can either be good or it can be bad. You decide. The power is in your hands. Number four, if, so, if your social media is currently bad, cleanse it. Do better. Choose who to follow. Choose who to listen to. Ensure that whatever it is you're feeding your soul is worth it. And have I missed anything? No. Oh, lastly. Lastly, lastly, lastly. <laughs> Please follow us on all social media platforms yes. that, are be that are below the screen right now. <laughs> We, we, we promise you we'll give you good Christian content. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank See you, you very next much. time. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Stay blessed. <coughs> and thank you very much for watching. This is complimentary of RCC Heaven Skate. Go follow them and be blessed.